Uh, and this is free for all of you, but if you do have the capacity to tip Adrian, we are able to take cash tips as well as digital tips. They would be much, much appreciated uh, for all of this knowledge that you are about to gain, and I promise you it's going to be really, really great. Uh, also, we have some magazines up here, so please take one minute to learn more about Adrian. You get gifts. Yes. Yes. <laughs> free with free lecture. Free with free lecture. <laughs> free with tipping. Uh, so that is all for you. Uh, please feel free to hang out, ask questions at the end. There's going to be a lot of opportunities to kind of engage. Uh, and thank you so much again for being here. We appreciate it. So let's hear it one more time for Adrian. If you <laughs> But anyone showed up tonight because Top Gun Maverick is out, <laughs> and Obi-Wan Kenobi is out, and Stranger Things Season 4 is out. So great. Thank you for choosing to spend your Friday night with me. Um, <laughs> we're going to talk about some art, okay? Um, and that dirty part, um, I mean, it is French. So <laughs> what you see tonight is not going to be the most scandalous thing, but I just feel like I should warn you, right? Okay. Um, let's address the elephant in the room, shall we? It's been a shit week, <laughs> all right? Um, I've had big feelings. My feelings might come out in the middle of this lecture. If you know me, you know that's part of the course. Um, but what I was thinking was, how about this? My proposal to you for tonight is this. Let's leave the chaos of the real world out there just for one night. I'm giving you all permission to just let it go, relax, uh, talk, we're gonna talk about art. I'm gonna ask you questions, you might ask me questions. We're gonna laugh, hopefully. We're gonna <laughs> learn, hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed. And the thing is, it's because art brings people together, right? Fringe brings people together. Theater, music, visual arts, it doesn't matter what it is, that's what brings us together. Does that sound okay to you? Yeah. Alright, let's do it. You might know me as the Wandering Art Historian. I do have a proper name. It is Adrian, as Melanie said. I've got business cards scattered around strategically. Um, I have information, all kinds of stuff. If you want to hit me up after, um, Melanie was right. It's been two years since we planned this. And in fact, you all are in for a treat because this is my first in-person live public presentation in over two years. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we have some questions. So, like, we didn't say the term interactive, but it might be a little bit. So let me ask you this. Is there anyone here who has attended any of my events in the past, lecture, class, book club, dine and learn presentation, Rollins class, anybody ever attend any of those in person? Yes, sweet, awesome, thank you. Thanks for coming back. Um, is there anybody here who has never attended one of my in-person presentations? Art historical virgins, thank you, thank you. Um, I promise you're gonna have a good time tonight. Just kick back, relax. Like I said, I, I do want to know your thoughts. I will ask challenging questions about the artwork. All your answers are going to be wrong. So, so don't even worry about it, okay? Um, let's see here. Can we do that? Visual Fringe team, Woo! Melanie, Anna, the Dean, Nick, Tim, Megan, and Jane. Please tell her that I mentioned her. Um, I would not be here without them. Here come the feelings. I'm so grateful for this opportunity. Look at this place that they made for us. Is this awesome or what? Please go out and look at the artwork. Uh, Central Florida's best talent out there on the walls. Purchase their art. All the money goes directly to them. Okay, um, what else? Oh, yeah, this is what I call the shameless self-promotion <laughs> part of our presentation. I do have a blog. Um, like, if you like what we talk about tonight, you can check out my blog. It will be celebrating its fifth anniversary this July. Hundreds of blog posts. 
Um, very quick, you know, super artsy, whatever. New post every Wednesday, okay? Um, check me out on YouTube. This pandemic was weird, y'all. I got a freaking YouTube channel, like it's insane. 50 videos, anything you want to learn about art, it's on there, it's all for free, okay? Oh yeah, so remember how we had that pandemic and we all had to stay home? So I switched to, instead of wandering out, now I'm wandering for, via Zoom, okay? And so I'm teaching classes via Zoom for the rest of the year, including a really cool class on women artists in June, um, and July and August dedicated to modern art. It's gonna get weird. So if you like that kind of stuff, all right. Oh boy, I also host a book club. I have been busy, right? Okay. Um, the last Sunday of the month, from two to three, we meet via Zoom, June through October. Three, fiction, two, nonfiction, all art historical or artsy in some way, Join us, we have a great time. And I promise this is it. You can all get all of this information courtesy of my email newsletter. Comes to your inbox every other Wednesday. And it's just me, so it's not like you're selling your email address to anybody. There's no ads. If you're like, I'm over it, just send me an email and I'll take you off the list. No worries. Okay? Awesome. Um, I've been on a Lego buying spree lately. So. <laughs> Um, you can also tip your cash Monet <laughs> straight <laughs> back the box. Um, puns are free with the price of admission, which is why this lecture is also free. Okay. Um, okay, that's it. That's all of my stuff. Thank you for coming tonight. Um, how, how do we feel about art? How, do, do you like it? I mean, you're here. So that's got to be something, right? Um, do you like to go to museums? Yes. Okay, do you like to go to art galleries and stuff like that? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, how do you feel about sex? Are we doing sex? Sex and Right, okay, all right, okay. Well, then you're in the right place. Good job. Okay. If you're not cool with any of that stuff, you know, I mean, you're at fringe, so I hate to say it, but you're going to run into that all over the place. Um, I do feel like, you know, because it feels kind of dirty, naughty, whatever, you may see some things tonight that shock you. <laughs> That's deliberate. I chose things on purpose to challenge you. Okay? Um, you may see some things that make you feel uncomfortable. If you need to step out, there are bathrooms on either side. There's a water fountain down the hall. Okay? If you need to cool off. If you need to cool off. If you see something that you need to photograph for your research later, that's entirely up to you. I don't need to know about that. Okay? It's very cool. Also, to the folks who have known me only in my classes and stuff, where I have to be like very professional and what have you, um, Adrian at Fringe is a little bit different than Adrian in the classroom. So some unexpected words may come out, and that's just because I fucking love to swear. Okay? <laughs> so, there we go. Um, are you ready? Yay! Yay! Um, I thought right out the gate that maybe I would introduce you to this topic with a, a painting that's maybe a little more sexually charged. A little, maybe a little erotic. Okay, like, I just, let's just dive right in, right? Okay, don't freak out. Again, if you need to avert your eyes, that's fine. If you need to take some deep breaths, that's cool too. Are you ready? Yeah. And I have to warn you. Come on. today's presentation. We're actually going to start with an art movement that's one of my favorites, the golden age of Dutch Baroque painting. Has anybody ever heard that phrase before? I, I fucking love that phrase so much. 
Um, here's the thing. Amazing works of art from Holmes, Rembrandt, Judith Leister. Okay, right? Those are some pretty big names. You might not know them, but they're big to me, okay? But these artists were so dirty and nasty, and it's like a weird contradiction, okay? So here's the deal. What we're gonna do is we're gonna read this painting together. What does that mean? What that means is we're gonna look for the clues that are hidden in plain sight. It's much easier than you think once you get the hang of it. Okay, so we're gonna look for colors, we're gonna look for symbols, and we're gonna look for repeated stories. Those are the stories, humans love stories. Fringe, humans love stories, right? <laughs> It's the reason why we get a new Batman movie every three years. <laughs> Hollywood, oh, Hollywood can't come up with anything new. It's because we keep going to the theater to see those movies. We love Batman, right? Okay. Now, um, I said this was sexually charged, a little erotic, and you're probably like, where? Right? Right? Okay. Once we start analyzing those clues, it will all become clear. And there's a reason why it has to be a little hidden, okay? The Dutch at this time, think 1600s, okay? Very super religious, very strict Calvinists. Think um, cleanliness is next to godliness, or idle hands are the devil's playground, that kind of thing, right? And so they would create artwork that seems very tame, but once you start peeling back the layers, you realize it's actually got something else going on, okay? And they would justify that by saying, well, you see, there's a moral here. There's a lesson to be learned. In fact, a lot of times they were warnings, okay? So we're going to read this painting together. I'm going to point out some stuff, and then I'm going to ask all of you, what is the warning in this painting? Ready? Okay. First of all, who painted this? Vermeer. 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 Excellent. Uh, that's the guy, the girl with pearls. Pearl earrings. Okay. Okay, so um, we see a lot of paintings from him that we would call domestic interiors. That's basically just the inside of somebody's house. And we believe it's his house. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the figures and work our way out. Okay? So what are we looking at? Can anybody just tell what, what what do you think you're seeing right here? A piano lesson. Excellent. Well done. This is officially titled. The music lesson. Um, it is from 1662-1665, so the height of the golden age. The Dutch girl painting, Vermeer, painter of light. He's amazing, awesome. And it's a music lesson. Okay, that seems so banal. That seems so like, whatever. Um, here is this nice lady. She is the one playing this instrument, and here is her teacher. Ugh, what's sexual about that? Okay, it's coming. Um, first of all, what is this instrument that she's playing? Now, you said piano lesson, and that's close. It's called a virginal. All right, first red flag, everybody. Um, so she is playing a virginal, and I want you to notice something really interesting. Do you see this, um, this, uh, this thing right back here? It looks like it's a painting, but you see her face. What is that really? It's a mirror. Okay, do you see? Her face isn't staring down at her finger placements. Where is she looking off to? Uh-huh. She's looking at a teacher. She's looking at a teacher. Okay, yeah. See this? She's looking off to the side. Like, I'd rather focus on who my teacher is than in the lesson. Right? Okay. So here, that's one of your first clues. All right. And he's just standing there. Do to do. Okay, so fine. Um, what else is going on here? Okay, so do you see this instrument? How do I put this? thrusting itself out into the middle of the, the painting. Do you see it? Do you see it? Do I need to keep doing this? Okay, this is a viol. It's in that category with like violin and shit like that. Okay. Um, now, some art historians would say what this depicts is a harmonious couple in love. And you're like, oh, that's so sweet. 
because he would sit in the chair and play music like a duet, right? Well, isn't that just the most sweetest thing you ever heard in your life? But here's the thing, when it comes to art, music definitely symbolizes love and romance, a hundred percent. However, the playing of instruments definitely symbolizes sex and getting it on, okay? Why do I say that? Okay, um, a viol is played like a cello, similar to a cello. Um, <laughs> how do you play a cello? <laughs> right? Okay, you spread your legs, and you place it in between your legs, and you play a bow back and forth, right? Okay, you're probably thinking, Adrian, you're reading way too much into this thing. Oh, I wish that were the case, but no, the artist would make these creative decisions deliberately, intentionally, knowing that the viewer would read that in the painting, okay? Also think about this, when you're plucking those strings, <laughs> plucky pluck pluck, <laughs> I don't need to say masturbation, right? Okay, you get it or what have you, okay. Um, do you see this um, little picture here on the table? That seems so pretty and nice, doesn't it? Okay, so um, in our history, when you see a vessel that contains liquid, what do you think that references? The JJ? <laughs> yes, the woman's genitalia. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, and that even applies to religious figures and even more specifically, the Virgin Mary. Because women are viewed as vessels to receive Oh, do you not? Don't make me say it, y'all. Yeah. You get it, right? Yeah, thank you. Okay, so the fact that we have a vessel here, what color is the vessel? What's white. What's white represent? Virginity. Purity. Virginity. She's playing a virginal. Do you see how everything is kind of connecting, right? And think about this. The Dutch at this time are known for their... Um, their porcelain and tile painting, which is white with a blue design on it. Does that picture have any blue design? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, so we put all of this together and you're like, okay, but there's one more thing. Are you ready for it? Vermeer is a little nasty. <laughs> I know he's got like, okay, girl, girl, Aaron, blah, 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 whatever. He's a little nasty. Let's go back to the mirror. Oh yeah, if you need to get up and come closer, that's totally fine. Do you see, so we have her head looking off. What's this contraption in the background? The What's back it of the chair? What, what? The back of the chair? No, it's reflecting back the legs of an easel. Who, in this scene, would have an easel? Do we see anyone in the picture plane with an easel? No. That means, what? That's it. So what he is implying here is that he would be standing here painting this lovely scene so much so that he's painted a little clue that he's there. And you think, well, that might be charming, you know, witnessing love, true love, <laughs> right? Or is it a little creepy? Is it a little, maybe I shouldn't be looking at this. Maybe it's a little voyeuristic, okay? So if we put all of our clues together, all of our symbols, what is the warning Vermeer has placed in this painting? What is it? Pardon? The red skirt. The red skirt. Red, a color of passion, of a covered over by another color to kind of tamp it down. Hidden, perhaps, maybe. What else? Watch out for virgins. Watch out for virgins. I mean, that's just good information. <laughs> Regardless of the century. I think the warning here is, hey, let's stay focused. Let's not get distracted from our studies. 
let's um, remain as virginal as we can, right? Okay, warning time. Um, we're going to actually, we kicked things off with the golden age of Dutch bro painting. We're going to circle back around because I told you they're dirty and nasty. And I'm going to prove my point by the end, okay? Should we, let's move up a couple centuries. Does that sound okay to you? Um, what's going on here? Just a typical day for women. <laughs> Laying around in the forest naked, like yes. we do. You got it. You got it. Who are we looking at? Can you tell who we are looking at just from this painting? Just from flat out looking. At. Okay. So have you ever heard the phrase uh, "classic female nude"? The classic female nude. That's going back to this. Okay. We're going to read this painting together because this is an example of one of our repeated stories. Maybe not as awesome as Batman, but something that comes up frequently throughout art history across the centuries. Okay, so here we have this nice lady who is so serene and peaceful, uh, and she is laying on this beautiful this divan, kind of like a crumpled up blankets and everything. What color? What color are these blankets? Red. red. What's, what, what's, what's red associated with? What feeling? Fashion. Okay, we've got some bed sheets here. We have a beautiful, very classic, idyllic Italian landscape in the background. You see this kind of hazy browns, almost like it's smoky. That's referred to as smato. You would see that a lot in uh, the paintings by Da Vinci. And in fact, this is by Giorgione, so it's right there in that sweet spot of the Italian Renaissance, 1508-1510. Um, this is the goddess of love, Venus, and the repeated story is that of the sleeping Venus, okay? And what this was, okay, so, <coughs> back in time, um, the idea of the sleeping Venus, it was a poem that was traditionally read at Roman weddings, okay? And the poem went like this. Venus is so serene and she's so happy and joyful that she just falls asleep in a paradise, an idyllic garden, and um, her, uh, a puti or a cupid would hear the wedding taking place and he would come and say, Venus, come wake up, let us go to the wedding. And they would go to the wedding and it would be like, she was invoked, she was invited there to give a blessing to the newlyweds. The goddess of love herself invited to this wedding. Now, who is Cupid? Anybody know who Cupid is? That's her son, okay? We don't see Cupid in this particular version of this story, but we've um, done x-rays and reflectograms, and he actually was painted in here at her feet at one time. Okay, um, his pupil was this guy named Titian. Is that, uh, yeah, a Titian? Okay, sweet. So, pretty, pretty great. Now, cool thing about this is um, <coughs> we would actually refer to this as a modest Venus. I know, the, the boobs <laughs> out, that doesn't count. But the fact that she is just ever so slightly covering her genitalia makes her modest. So <coughs> the next time you decide, I'm just gonna freewheel it, just say, <laughs> I'm just being <laughs> modest. Okay. Is she covering her genitalia, really? Is she yeah. really? Right, yes. wank, wank, nudge, nudge. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing too, it wasn't just a blessing on the newlyweds. They might hang a painting like this in their home for like marital sexy times, like erotic art and what have you. you. You see what I'm saying? So it's interesting that we make a distinction between erotic art and not the Italian Renaissance when that's like half of it. Okay, <laughs> so let's go up a couple of decades. Do you see a similar format to everything we just picked out with the previous painting? Okay, because this one is known as the Venus of Urbino and it's by Titian, Giorgione's pupil. Okay? So what has he decided to change up? Because you know the artists, they get to make their own creations.
creative decisions. They get to kind of change things up a little bit. Do you see some differences between this painting and the previous one? Her eyes are open. Her eyes are open. Not only that, she's looking at us. Yeah. Now a little coquettish. A little like, hmm, I didn't see you come in there. Right, okay. But are we outdoors? No. No, no we're inside now. We assume or deduce that we're probably in like a bed chamber area because we have a window to the outside. Uh, what you see here is a myrtle tree. Myrtle Myrtle. In a <laughs> She's holding red roses. When do we give red roses? When we're in love. Valentine's Day. Exactly right. Um, but we have this uh, kind of curtain drape. She is um, assisted by two maid servants. Um, we see her on this beautiful bed. Again, look at that red color hmm. popping out right there in these beautiful bed sheets. However, Titian has decided, yeah, she's going to be modest, but look at this hair braid. Oh my gosh, hot girl summer. Uh, she's got this beautiful pearl earring, a bracelet, her hair is down, she's making eye contact with us, and the maid servants are probably getting out her bridal garments. These will probably, probably be bridal chests, gifts given to the newlyweds, and they would be decorated with scenes of the sleeping Venus as well. Um, I, want, I, want to, I want to point something out, though. You ready for this? Um, the great thing about art is um, there's a lot of diagonal lines, and those diagonal lines really mean something. So I'm going to show you some lines. We're going to connect the dots, and I'm going to see if you can pick up on what uh, Titian was trying to say. So the color red is a really good co color for when you want the viewer to move their eye through the scene. Your eye goes to the color red, right? Here we have red on the bed and on the dress of the maid servant, right? I'm gonna draw the diagonal line and you tell me where it crosses. You see where, you see? <laughs> right in the vagina. Okay, so this diagonal line, that's deliberate. Every time you, you think, oh, what a happy circumstance. <laughs> the artist is thinking about that. The artist is thinking about how you will see this painting. Okay, um, one last little thing before we move on. Um, we don't have a Cupid and we don't have a Poutine. What do we have at the feet of Venus? Oh. <laughs> I love paintings with puppies. Um, you see how peaceful he is? He's all covered up and he's sweet. Um, does anybody know what dogs represent, especially in a setting like this where we assume it is associated with marriage and being a new Fidelity. That's it. That's how we get the term Fido. Fidelity and loyalty, especially in marriage. Somebody's been paying attention to my class. I love that. knows all this and decides to shake things up. How, how do people respond to that? Do you like it when an artist reinvents something? Again, back to the Batman movies. Well, yes and no, right? Okay, okay, maybe yes, maybe no, personal, whatever, okay. How about this? Has anybody heard of this guy named <coughs> Edouard Manet? Not Monet, Manet. Um, it was his painting, The Luncheon on the Grass, from 1863. That was my inspiration for a little <laughs> graphic. Thank you for the graphic. Um, like, what's going on here? Like, what are our clues? Manet was the kind of guy, he was like, you know what, the world is changing. Paris is so modern now. I'm going to live this modern life. What if I just want to paint something? Because I want to. What about, I don't want to put colors and symbols and stories of the paintings. What if I just want to paint what I want, art for art's sake? Have we heard that phrase before? Okay, that's the epitome of modern art. That's what gets
gets us going. So Manny is like, I'm just gonna paint some lady who decided to take off all her clothes for whatever reason in the middle of this picnic, and she's gonna look out at the audience, and these dudes are just gonna be talking. And it infuriated everyone. Everyone was furious. However, I, I show you this because he played around with the sleeping Venus. What's going on here? Is, okay, first, okay. So, I like to do this thing where I like to pepper in some art theory. Oh boy, thank you for not getting up and walking away and <laughs> art theory, appreciate that. Um, basically what art theory is, is asking challenging questions so that you can see a piece of art from as many different perspectives as possible. How many people are in this room? That's how many different interpretations we're gonna get of this one painting. And in, to some degree, all of you will be right. Why is that? Well, okay, so science is great, but science doesn't give a fuck about your feelings, right? It is all about facts, right? Art, though, is a balance between facts and feelings, okay? Because you can learn everything there is to know about Manet, why he painted this, who this lady is, the materials used to paint it, but we're humans who love stories, and we're gonna bring our own personal experiences, our highs, lows, fears, hopes, dreams, likes, dislikes, to every piece of art that we see. And those feelings are just as important as the facts associated with the piece. Cool? Art has a certain amount of subjectivity to it, okay? So when Manet is like, oh, I'm gonna shake things up and it's gonna piss everybody off, A, yes, and two, he was right, okay? So is this a motif that we have seen before? Is this a variation on the sleeping Venus motif. What do you think? Yeah. Yes. yes? Okay, how many of you are like, oh yeah, yeah, he's definitely referencing a, mo a motif that we see. Okay, some of you are kind of hesitant. How many of you are like, oh no, there is something else going on here? Huh? Okay, so um, let's read it together and let's see what you think, okay? Um, we're, we're definitely indoors. Right? And in fact, we've got these beautiful green uh, curtains. We think like, you know, those big, heavy velvet curtains, right? Okay. Um, and uh, uh, do you see any red? No. Oh, a big absence of red here. Maybe a little kind of muddy red down here, but we don't really see it. We see a lot of bed sheets, a lot of bed sheets. Um, we see, oh, she has a silk robe with some flowers and tassels on it. Um, uh, is she being coquettish? Is this a modest Venus? How is the hand different? Yeah, does it feel a little more deliberate than the, than the other? Oh, I just, I just woke up. It's great. Okay. Um, we have her with a beautiful flower in her hair. Um, we have her decked out with jewelry, almost as if She's waiting for somebody. Because she doesn't look coquettish at all. She's looking at us like, can I help you? Why are you here, right? Um, do we have a maidservant? Yes, we actually have a maidservant who is a person of color. That changes the script. And um, do we have a Cupid or a Pootie at the feet of this Venus? There's a cat. What color is this cat? Black. Oh man. I don't have to explain what a black cat is, right? Okay, so, so again, are we seeing a sleeping Venus motif? Do you see, yes and no, right? Do you see why everyone was freaking furious when Manet presented this to the world? They were like, how dare you? How dare you fuck with us? We expect to see A, B, and C, and you have turned all of that upside down. Now the title of this painting is very interesting. It is Olympia, Olympia, which I, I did a little backwards, um, means from Mount Olympus. 
So it's interesting that he's saying she is goddess-like from Mount Olympus, but he does not give her a specific goddess name. Very interesting. Um, let me ask you this. Uh, what's this lady's job? She's a sex worker. What? She's a sex worker. She's a sex worker. She's a prostitute. A courtesan, whatever you want to call it, this is a business lady. Because think about it. When you see the two side by side, it's pretty obvious that this is kind of like, aww, hey, come to bed, bring us all the time. And this lady's like, have you venmo me the money yet? <laughs> right? And think about the switch out. We have the sleeping puppy, loyalty and fidelity in marriage, swapped out for a black cat. <laughs> This 
is our friend Paula Motorson Becker. Okay, she is a German artist. What's interesting about her, I mean, there's a lot of things, super interesting. She is the artist considered the first to ever paint themselves in a self-portrait, nude, and pregnant. Hmm. Interestingly enough, she was not pregnant at the time she painted that painting. Now, it's interesting that themes of motherhood would run through her oeuvre, if you will. Um, but what is very heartbreaking is that she passed away 18 days after giving birth to her daughter, um, so she never got to see her. Very sad. I promise we will not have sad moments for very long during this presentation. Um, are either of these sexually charged? Sorry about that. Oh, Melanie was like, that one, wait a second, maybe not. <laughs> maybe? Maybe it's both. Maybe this one is supposed yeah. to be? Yeah. What's the word you would use to describe this one then? Intimate. Intimate, which is not always sexual, correct? Is a nude figure always ready for sex? Does nudity always imply a sexual interaction? No. 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 No, no, no. no. Um, it's interesting though, because sex kind of is implied with a mother and her child. Right? Because that's how you get babies, right? Okay. But it doesn't feel erotic, right? Hmm. Interesting. Um, how does this one feel? Okay, if you gasped at this, you are not ready for what it's doing. <laughs> Has anybody ever seen the stars before? Um, I'm going to challenge you with this, and I'm just going to plant this little seed. Um, go home tonight, start YouTubing old Madonna videos from the 80s, and you will see this artist all over the place. Chris sees it. Does anyone know the name of this artist? Okay, before I get there, before I get there, before I get there, don't answer that question. <laughs> Male or female artist? Oh, nobody wants to try. <laughs> you want to try? <laughs> Male or female? Who is it? Male, female. Whoa, and a lot of hesitation. Okay, why male? Why male? You want you want to say? It just feels very promiscuous. Feels promiscuous. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Why female? Anybody vote female? Why? Wait. So we both consider all of Okay, I like doing that. I like trying to change things up a little bit. Um, 
Who painted this? Has anybody seen the work of this artist before? We're moving in a little bit more contemporary art. Um, this is Micheline Thomas. What does it, does this arrangement, does this composition of figures look at all familiar to you from anything you may have seen? Yes, I'm, you're seeing it. We've got three figures. They're all looking out at us though. Do you notice that? Ah, oh, yeah, 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 you see what's going on here. Okay, so Micheline Thomas is a lesbian, she's a woman of color, and she likes to reimagine art historical paintings on a more contemporary level, replacing the figures with black women. How does that change the interpretation of this painting? Well, do you notice, first of all, all three women are clothed. Do we see that? Do you also see that these ladies are freaking fabulous. Do you see them totally decked out? Their hair is awesome. They've got their jewels on. And it's interesting because Micheline Thomas would be considered mixed media because she doesn't just use like enamel, oil, and uh, acrylic. She also uses rhinestones. And what's very cool about this particular painting is that it is 10 feet tall and 24 feet wide. It is enormous. It takes up space. It takes up space. Just sit back for a second. Um, is Micheline Thomas referencing Manet's painting with this? Do you see it maybe? Do you see it? What if I, first of all, how much do you love this patchwork, collage quilt kind of feel to it? Um, kind of makes me think of the G's Bend artists who work sewing the quilts. Um, I love this singular eye staring out at us, the all-seeing eye perhaps. And when you see the two together, I think it's very, very profound. Because think about this. Remember how I said art theory is about your feelings to a certain extent? Because art is sub subjective. Right to a point, okay? And how I said, we all bring our own baggage. We all bring our own shit to every piece of art, right? Okay, so as a white woman, when I see this painting by Manet, what options do I have? Who do I identify with? As a woman of color, who do they identify with? And what has Micheline done? Micheline's like, you know what? She doesn't need a maid servant. She doesn't need anybody to work for her. She's Venus. She's the queen. She's the focus. No distractions. Because Manet shook things up. Think about it. I I'm just some basic white bitch, right? And when I look at this, I'm like, okay, my options are Venus, awesome. That's not me, or maidservant, right? But Manet paints this, what are your options? I like that Micheline changed things up. Art is for everyone, right? It's what brings everybody together, so shouldn't it reflect everyone? Okay, so we're now entering, um, oh good, we're kind of wrapping up. We're entering the, the, the phase of our discussion called the Genitalia or not, <laughs> okay? So I'm gonna present some artwork to you and I want you to tell me genitalia or not. All right, what do you think? Are you ready? You gasped at the painting that I thought was one of the tamest ones I have. George O'Keefe, good job. Genitalia or not? Ah, uh, okay, we just had our class, we just had our class. Okay, George O'Keefe, um, her approach was this. She liked to strip everything down to its most basic form. So when you think about her work, she was taking um, floral and botanical references and zooming in, almost like a microscope, okay? And when you do that, you remove a lot of the characteristics that you would associate, like 
may be petals, a stem, leaves, or what have you, okay? But in so doing, you also abstract what you're looking at, thus giving the viewer the opportunity to bring all their shit to the painting and see vaginas as far as the eye can see, right? <laughs> Labias everywhere, okay? Don't you think that George O'Keefe did that intentionally? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Let me read you some quotes, okay? Let me read you some quotes. So she was married to this guy named Stieglitz, Alfred Stieglitz. Everybody, right? You've heard of him? Okay. Um, this is who she was married to. She chose to marry this guy. Quote, woman feels the world differently than man feels it. The woman receives the world through her womb. Mind comes second. Um, uh, he died. Okay, so then um, <laughs> this is what Georgia said. Quote, when people read erotic symbols into my paintings, they're really talking about their own affairs. Georgia puts that right back on us. She's like, you see, I see flower, you see vagina. Okay, there we go. Let me do this one. Genitalia or not? Oh, you don't see it? It's like all the genitalia together, right? Okay. So um, we've got our leaves. We've got our, our shaft. Our shaft. What, 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 what are these things coming out of here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what's this um, explosion? <laughs> Without bone in it, right? Okay. And 
what's fellatio? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, <laughs> so we are now going to circle back to the beginning, to the golden age of Dutch. Look at how far you've come. I'm so proud of all of you, your colors, your symbols, your repeated stories. We're going to wrap up with probably the dirtiest, nastiest repeated story I can think of. It's one of my favorites. I don't know what that's supposed to be, but um, what's, 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 what's going on here? What's going on here? Before we read it, remember, we're back to the golden age of Dutch Bro painting, okay? There's going to be a warning, a lesson, or a mural, a mural, moral, okay? So we have to learn. What are we looking at? What What is happening here? What's happening here? Can anybody tell me? She's playing the loop. Okay, we've got playing a loop. Yes, could I? Could I? Uh, is there something more going on here? She's taking her. Well, in a way, yes. In a way, yes. Okay, let's read this together. All right. So here we have this beautiful lady with the decolletage out. Okay, right. Okay, expose a little bit here. She is playing a lute, an instrument you tend to pluck. Oh, do we remember? You know, about the plucky pluck pluck. Okay, right. <laughs> um, notice that she is just freaking living her life, her best life. She is happy. The light shines on her. Beautiful feathers in her hair. Um, she's wearing yellow. The color yellow in art. Um, mm, mm, mm. Betrayal. 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 Okay. Um, here we have this gentleman who we don't really see, right? We see his silhouette. He is in red, head to toe, amazing feathers in his cap. He's reaching for her, but do you see he's holding this little brown bag here in his other hand? What do you think's in that little brown bag in his other hand? What's in there? Money. Money's in there. And then who the heck is this lady? She seems to be super happy that they're talking together. Mm. What's going on? Prostitution! Yes. Okay. This is the repeated story of motif that we would call the procuress because she is procuring his night's activities and entertainment. Do you get what I'm saying, right? Okay, so we see this motif again and again. Um, young lady, young gentleman, older woman who's in charge negotiating the fees, but look at how freaking happy they are. They're just, this is like the best night ever. Um, uh, point out a really interesting thing. So we've talked about the loop, the color ye yellow, a little bit of betrayal, because I love you for tonight, but not for tomorrow, unless you pray again, right? <laughs> He's covered in red clothing, head to toe. Do you notice that the feathers, feathers are a symbol of loose morals, and who's got the feathers in their caps? Yeah, okay. Where is the light source in this painting? Yeah. The candle, can we see it? A little bit. What do we see? The flame. And where is it? Right here. He is on fire, probably because her boobs are out. So basically, what's our warning? Remember, these are our strict religious Calvinists who are like, hey, there's a lesson here. Although the lesson to me is like, prostitution seems pretty great. I don't understand. <laughs>
Who painted this? Vermeer. And what is on the wall in this painting? Do you see it? Do you see it? Okay. What is the special, special about this painting? Who knows? If you know this, holy shit. Where, first of all, where is this painting? Nobody knows because it was stolen from the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum, which means it's AWOL and we'll probably never ever see it again. It is called The Concert by Vermeer. It has the Procure scene in the background. And on top of that, freaking Vermeer painted his own version of the Procurus scene. And what's so crazy about this one is that it's probably the only instance of a self-portrait we have of Vermeer, and that's this guy. <laughs> Look at his freaking face. He's like, ha, 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 it's not me doing it. I'm just here drinking. <laughs>
please drive home safely and hopefully maybe next year we'll come back for Pokemon too.